How many tea bags are you supposed two. to put in a teapot? Well, two for having two cups of tea. Can you get the? Can you get the mugs? The mugs. The mugs are in here. Can you get the mugs? Today, Georgia. Uh huh. We're gonna have a cup of tea. We are. Just a normal English breakfast tea. This is technically us not being able to meet up at each other's houses. So having to find like a house in the in middle between. of where we How live. How long does it take you to get here? Um, this is like a 20 minute. It took me an hour. Really? So it's not in, in the middle. It took you an hour to get here? Mm -hmm. What was you driving in? Uber. When did you move out of your house? When I was 18. 18? Yeah. You moved straight to London? Straight to London. But before that, so when I was 15, I would come up to, so I met my manager. He saw a video of me on YouTube. Yeah. Because someone was sent it to him. And then he came to meet me and my dad in Nando's. Yeah. Back at home in Wolfsburg. <laughs> and he was like, I'd like, um, I'd like to like set up some sessions with me. Mm. And then, so I was like, I don't want to go to uni. And I'm doing so much work in, well, I'm writing loads in London as well as at home. And my yeah. manager's in London. I may as well move here. So I asked my auntie and uncle, can I move here? And I got a Starbucks transfer, because I worked at Starbucks. <laughs> Moved up. And like, I worked in Starbucks like four times a week. Then I'd write. Go home, but I'm, I'd literally, I didn't have any friends. I just like, like people forget I'm from Warsaw. Yeah. I'm in West Midlands. When I talk more, my accent does come out, so. <laughs> but I'm not from London, so for me to even be where I am now is it's crazy. Because crazy. you just, because when I was growing up, all I thought was like, oh, how lucky, like I used to watch some stuff from people going to the Brit school, and I was like, I want to be that, I want to do that. I couldn't, because I didn't live there. I want to order some food, and then I want to go and sit down properly. What food? What's the vibe? Um, you could just do pizza. Do you like pizzas? Yeah. My favourite pizza is margarita pizza yeah. with just pepperoni and sweet corn. Well, I don't like sweet corn. Um, but we could do, let's do that. No, it's okay. No, it's, no. We'll I go. don't mind it. We'll go halves and halves. Okay. Okay? Mm hmm I was thinking about, like, what's going to happen after your album comes out and then who you're going to be and, like, where you're going to live and are you going to do, like, an Adele and, like, just go and live in a mansion quietly and not go anywhere? Or are you going to be like at carnival? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Do you know what? I don't even know. That's a what if. My dad said never answer. He never answers what if questions. Okay. I try and avoid certain times. Like when it's really busy, I won't be like. In when school kids come out. Yeah. Like, that, no, that happened the other day. I was leaving my house. <laughs> to get an Uber. My Uber was there and I hate making Uber's way. And then these girls went, oh, it's George, so I ran back in the house. <laughs> and I got someone else to go out and they were just hovering. And then I heard, Babes. they were outside my house going, should we knock on her door? It's just, mm. I feel the same. Yeah. Cause I think I'll be out sometimes with my brother and he's, sometimes he's cool and sometimes he just wants to be left alone. Yeah. But I'm like, Jamie, you don't understand. Like this could be the only time they're ever going to see you. Mm -hmm. And I know what it feels like pick anyone, Eminem, like, I know what it feels like to have listened to someone over and over again. Like, yeah. when you hear a certain song by them, it, it literally makes you feel a certain way or, like, mm -hmm. takes you back to a certain time. And then you see them and you're like, nah, bro, like, i got to say something. Yes. It is that feeling of, like, you must and have had that with someone. No, no, actually. If Amy was still here, what would you yes. do? Would you go and speak to her? Yes. 100%. Would. That would, yeah, that's probably the only person. You'd be like, I have to talk to You'd you. Be like... <laughs> But I'd like, I'd suss it out first, yeah. like, See what should, she's I, on. should I approach her yet? What are you protective over? I'm not protective over everything, I just think more, a lot of people are watching me now, they don't even see everything in life. Yeah, it's proper scary. I have nearly a million followers. Really? On Instagram, don't you? That's weird. When I moved to London, I had about 500. Yeah. It's weird. And you got nearly a million. And that's like, it's quite a lot. Do you know who Janet Mock is? No. So Janet Mock is um, this really amazing woman, actually. She's written, I think she's written two or three books. And she talks about this thing called the pretty privilege of, mm -hmm. like, people act like it doesn't exist, but it does. No, it, I remember yeah, when I was does. watching the, um, my podcast, my favourite podcast ever. Which one? And I was like, Georgia, they're talking about you on the podcast. And you was like, what did they say? And I was like, Drake, and that you're pretty. And you was like, but I'm an artist first. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that must be really frustrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you get worried that people don't listen to you for the right reasons? A load of Twitter don't even know I make music. <laughs> so just, nice. They just think I'm a pretty person. Yeah. Thing is, when I first put my first song, there was nothing. There was no there image. There was no image. No so pictures. I was like, well, I know that people listen to Blue Lights because they like the song, they like yeah. what it meant, they like my voice. But it is true, pretty privilege. And we have this, there was um, some George Smith versus colorism. Oh, yeah. Debate. Yeah. I understand. I get it. 
I'm a conversation starter. It's fine. People always, like I said, people are always going to say something, mm -hmm. you know. And then we have this all, oh, you're light skinned. I had that growing up through school, like really. Yeah, you know. Did you have, have loads of mixed race friends? Mm -mm, had one. Yeah. We went to school with the majority white kids. Okay. No, I didn't want to have lips. I didn't want to have a bum. I wanted to be skinny. Yeah. I did actually get quite skinny at one point because I thought, you know, my friends are blonde and skinny and they have long hair. I had like huge extensions because I just didn't think I fitted in. Mm. Yeah, but back at school, I mean, I used to have a tash. I'll probably have one now. A what? Mustache. Did you? I still have one, but I get it done. <laughs> but like, people picked on me for that. People used to call me Tash all the time. But I got over it. My mum <laughs> My mom it wouldn't let me get it removed. Why? Probably because she wanted me to go through something. At Some school. kind of stress yeah. to be like, you know what, yeah. Georgia? But people are not nice. But you know, the pretty privilege is worked all through, all through history. Yeah. I am. Um, I noticed that your album was called Lost and Found, and then I was listening to all the songs, and I was like. There really is this through line in every song of someone who is feeling a certain way or has experienced something and having this moment of saying, of accepting that they feel that way. Mm -hmm. And then, like, the next song maybe will be, I don't feel that way anymore. Always. For Lost and Found, that was one of the early songs I wrote when I would come up to London mm -hmm. with my big suitcase. Yeah. And then have to go back home, like, a couple of days after. Yeah. And I remember... It was the first time I was went to Notting Hill. And I had this big suitcase because I was going back home after the session. And I just remember thinking, I'm such like a small girl in this city, like quite lost. But I'm on my way to write a song. I know exactly what I'm doing. The next day, I'll be confused. <laughs> and then About I'll something else. Yeah. I think it sums me up very well, lost yeah, and found. I think it does. You really like singing, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I can tell. Always sang. My dad used to send me out the living room. I used to get sent out the living room. That's on a regular. They were watching X Factor. I'd get sent out <laughs> to my room just for making just noise. Just for singing. Yes. Did you ever think about going on X Factor? Uh, or any you know like, talent when show? You go. I go back home now to Warsaw, yeah. and people are like, "You should go on X Factor." Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I guess they don't really know what I'm up to, but <laughs> apparently, I should still go on X Factor and audition. Why don't you try doing X Factor? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did want to. I used to be so jealous of those 17-year-olds on there. Yeah. Let's go back to Blue Lights, which for many people, including you, mm -hmm. was where it all started. I took media for A-levels. And part of the coursework, you have to give yourself a question to do with something in media. Yeah. I chose post-colonialism in grime music. Okay. <laughs> That's what I chose. I can't even spell but, what no, you just said. No, but funnily enough, I looked at um, Jamie's documentary for Form 696. Six, six. Right, okay. you know, I was looking at Getz's video to Rebel, Rebel with a Cause, I think. Yeah. And it begins with a little black kid watching the TV and I think David Cameron's giving a speech and like, I think, I think my 17 year old self being like, this is him being brainwashed because okay, this yeah. is a white man talking to him. Yeah. Can't see it, okay? And then, so then I was watching Dizzy Rascal's video, Sirens. Dad says take a break, because I've been like, just working quite hard. And obviously I had blood when you hear the sirens going in my head. And I just started singing, like oh, freestyling. But then, a couple of days before that, my friends, two friends, they came around to my house, and um, they left, one of them left their bag at mine, their pouch. And I'm really nosy, picked it up. It was so light. So obviously I looked in it and there was a knife in there. Mm. And I got it out, it was a flicky knife. Don't know why the I did that because I didn't know how to get it back. And I didn't want to tell my dad, so I YouTubed how to put it back. <laughs> yeah, and I did, and I did, and I put it back in my bag. I cleaned it, I didn't, never told him never told until him. like recently. And I was like, you know, part, I wrote Blue Lights about you guys. Because and I based, in your bag. so I based the story of these two boys and okay. imagined, that's why Blue Lights is talking about this boy being late from school, friend hits him up saying, yeah. Because I was imagining what happened if he did something with that knife mm. and he needed his friend to help him cover it up. And then I told my friends recently, oh, I wrote that song about you because I uh, looked in your bag. He was like, nah, I feel inspired. That's what he said. <laughs> and he's doing good stuff now. He's like a, um, a youth um, mentor for wow. like kids, like trying to get them to stop doing bad stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So That's so it. mad. Have you seen Black Panther? Yeah. Yeah. If you said no, I was going to be really upset with you. Imagine. Did no. you know you were on the soundtrack for Black Panther before you saw it? I thought soundtracks meant it was going to be in the film. Only two of the songs made it in the film. It, from, the, from the whole soundtrack? From the soundtrack. Which, but then I realised that that's normally how... The soundtrack's normally different to the film. To the, yeah. I didn't know that, no. I was in 
LA, doing yeah. camp vlog roll. Charlie Creators Festival, just finished, and I got a DM from Tunji saying, hey, do you want to work with Kendrick? So yeah. He said, okay. <laughs> I'll connect you with his manager. So, and he's like, do you want to work tonight? Yes. So, we get it. George, this is weird. I know. At what point, are you, like, this is weird. I'm just like, bye guys. And this is from no, this is no contact before. This is not no, even like never. a... never. I didn't even know you listened to my music. Yeah. Get to studio half, about half seven. I'm like, hi. Hi. So it's Kendrick, Dave, his manager, and then Sam Wave. And you're who... by yourself? Mm-hmm. Most of the time I'm by myself. But, like, explain... <laughs> I've always been like, like... Coming up to London by myself, first time I met Maverick Sabre by myself. For me, that was like, wow, I've Massive. listened to him yeah. so much. My dad's played him so much, so... Everything. There's no pressure, Georgia. There's no pressure, and there's no, like, you're in a cab for 20 minutes going to see Kendrick Lamar at a studio. Yeah. Your heart's not beating fast. Yeah. You're not worried about your writing ability, like, you know, my voice sounds like nothing. You're just like, this is... No, I was probably thinking, oh, I didn't text that person back. <laughs> so that's probably what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't returned a text message yet. Yeah, literally. And then I get to the studio. He left the room for me. He was like, you can just like mess around. So I was just like, hmm, on the mic. Just like getting, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> getting, <laughs> getting a melody sound and yeah. ideas. And then he comes back in. Then he like, we just play like that. <laughs> what, the you sound. just like doing just, yeah, noises just, on the just mic. Just noises, yeah. And he like lights on them. And then we wrote it together. He's just sick. The things he comes out with, sick. Just on the spot. I'm like, sick is the only, like, my <laughs> word that I describe like, anything amazing. It's just sick. It's just sick. Um, but we connected really well and just were able to talk on a level and then write. Mm -hmm. So it was good. And break down the gift and the curse of working with someone that big. Because you've had moments in your career mm -hmm. where you've worked with a massive artist and that's all you hear about. Mm -hmm. You just hear about them forever now. And then you have moments where you work with another massive artist, right. but then the credibility is different. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. Maybe when I'm really big and someone works with me, then we'll see how that goes up. Yeah. That, that pans up. Yeah. I don't know. Behind the scenes. But I understand why, mm -hmm. because it makes people click on the link. If you put Drake, if you put Kendrick Lamar, people click on the link. Cause Regardless they know, of what name's after. Yeah, because they know, oh, look. Which so I understand. And that's for everything. Mm -hmm. it, even if it's in, it, it doesn't have, not just music, it, any, anything. You know, in the entertainment world, that's how, that's how it works. I know, like, I'm good at what I do. So. Yeah. Eventually, regardless of everything else, mm -hmm. I can come through it. But then, ho maybe, hopefully in a year, I'm like, I'm establishing myself, I am me, and I'm establishing <laughs> yeah. myself as me. Yeah. So maybe it would just be Georgia. Smith. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that's the aim, innit? Is I that think it's, it's, it is kind of now like that, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But I understood why it wasn't, because it happens to everybody that, that gets like shouted out mm -hmm. or um, co signed. Or co signed or works with yeah. someone. Yeah. And then what is annoying about that when it goes outside of your own brain of what those two collaborations meant to you? Well, that can't be stopped. Mm -hmm. End of. Yeah. I saw something about Ray and Drake the other day. Oh, yeah? So it's just like everything... It is what it is. Yeah, and... You're still so like, happy that you did those... worked with yeah. those people? So grateful being on my life. Yeah. That was mad. Yeah, it was. Because me, Skepta, yeah. and Giggs. Yeah. Great. It's crazy. No one heard of me before. For, as in that, um, his fans, mm -hmm. Drake's fans. So he opened up a whole new, like... World. Yeah, yeah, world. I remember he said um, one thing, which I learned from him. Um, he, like, he wants to be the greatest ever, best. So everything he does is the best. Mm -hmm. Like, at his Boy Meets World tour, he had a huge... Globe. Globe. <laughs> because... He wanted that. <laughs> and that, that that's something I learned was just like, if you wh whatever you want, do it. Yeah. It, no matter how, how mad it would sound, you believe in what you do, do it. Is working mm -hmm. with those people about building relationships forever? Is it about being able to call on Kendrick or even Dave, his manager, or Tunji or whoever in the future and it, maintain those relationships? Or is it, can it sometimes be, we've done the collaboration now, thank you, see you later? No, I'd like to think, hey, want to be on my song, <laughs> you know? Or if, I, or if I need some advice yeah. or want to hit them to hear something, I could hit them up. Yeah. I sent Kendrick my album, he liked it. Oh, really? Yeah. Amazing. So I was happy. You was hoping, like, maybe sent a verse as well, like... Nah, be sick no be features. No, really? On my first album, I thought, nah, it's just me. People probably are going to expect me to have Drake feature and Kendrick feature, maybe Caliucci's feature mm -hmm. too. Who else? Stormzy feature. Yeah. Sorry. Maverick. And a Maverick feature. Maverick feature. 
Don't. Sorry, Oops. guys. But what am I going to do for album two? <laughs> I've got to have other stuff to do. You know. <laughs> what else is on the album that was important to you? There's a lot of love. There's a lot of love on there. But love in, like in different love. ways. Yeah. What is your relationship with love as a 20-year-old woman in the world? Do you like it? Do you hate it? I like it. <laughs> I like love. Yeah. I love people in love. Yeah. I love hearing about love. <laughs> I like rom coms. I do actually I do actually like them. Love is like you can experience love in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Love with your friends, love with your parents, yeah. love with boys, love with girls, yeah. love with so many different ways and you it just it's all in my head and I write about it. <laughs> I write about it. I'll give a lot. But when somebody when I've taken too much, that's it. It's done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm very I'm quite cold in that sense, but I can be really like emotional at times, and then I can turn stuff off. Okay. Which is my cold side. Being strong and being in love don't go hand in hand. It no. seems like for you... You're yeah, weak sometimes. Yeah. You're weak when you're in love. Not all the time, but... You are. You're, like, susceptible to things mm -hmm. that you wouldn't be if you weren't in love. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you seem like someone who's, like... If you have to be in that space... Sometimes. You will but be. But then sometimes I'll be like... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it. <laughs> Oh, I'd be like, no, I didn't say that. Yeah. Like, I wrote Teenage Fantasies. Teenage Fantasy. I never had a boyfriend before. Yeah. Oh, really? No, I hadn't had a boyfriend. Before. How old were you when you had your first boyfriend? 19. Are you joking? Yeah, 19. Cool, I really At like school, that. At school, me you. and my friends all got called frigid. <laughs> we, uh, and everyone was like, you girls are all did a weird. I forgot that word. Frigid, you know. Oh, my goodness. I used to be like, I really liked loads of boys at school and they were rejecting me because I wasn't, I wasn't the prettiest girl at school. I wasn't, I was a bit clapped. <laughs> I thought I had one time, yeah, because I had my hair permed and, and then I cut it really short. I thought, like, you know, when Rihanna had that shaved side? Yeah. You know, that's what I thought I looked like, but I didn't. You look like what? Just anything Just else? Just not that. Where do you see this all going, by the way? My plan is to, I, need, I want a lot, a lot of people to listen to my music. Mm -hmm. I also want to write a Bond tune. I nice. also want to direct some more videos and perform in the bigger venues, but make it intimate. Make it intimate. But. Yeah, I don't Somehow. know all about this, not being able to leave places without loads of security and stuff. I don't think you can have one without the other. I'm worried that no. you think you can. No, I know I can't. Because things are changing already mm -hmm. and I'm not even huge. Yeah. So, <laughs> no. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be crazy. Yeah, it, but I feel like it can be managed. Mm -hmm. I just have to be okay. Yeah. Just, so I need to be okay. Yeah. And be, be okay, like li really, in my head. <laughs> I need to be okay. Else things can go wrong. I'm going on holiday soon. <laughs> Where are you going? Sri Lanka. Oh, really? Have you been before? No. Ah. So, I haven't, but I've seen and I've heard, and you're going to have a great time. I hope so. Really Do you beautiful. tan easily? Uh, tan now. Food! <laughs> 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 Juice! Um, I got pepperoni. Amazing, it's my fave. There's no sweet corn because you're a sweet corn hater. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> you need to try sweet corn out of the tin right. on a pizza and you fold it in half like that and then you dip it into ketchup. 